Hey there, CPO here, and in this video I'm going to talk about a quick frame swap and how I did my electronics wiring. So you may remember when I got my Raptor from Tower Hobbies, it came with a broken frame, the canopy mounts were broke off. So I made a phone call to them the day I received the package and the very next business day they had shipped me a replacement frame free of charge. So regardless of the fact that it was broken in shipping, uh, they will also replace any plastic part that breaks within the first year. So either way, I was covered. So I have this new frame that I need to swap out uh, so that I have usable canopy mounts. So um, before I actually start doing all the wiring, I want to get that taken care of. So I've been kind of delaying the wiring. So I'm not going to go through the whole frame swap with you. It was really pretty easy. Um, this entire heli frame assembly is very modular. It's part carbon fiber, part plastic, and uh, just basically comes apart in pieces. So I just basically pulled off the frame sides uh, one side at a time, replaced uh, you know the bearings, moved them from from one the old frame to the new frame, and uh, and also these uh, these rollers for the belt, and uh, just basically reassembled the whole thing. And it was uh, pretty quick and easy. So you know I wouldn't want to do it very often because once you get all your electronics in, it becomes a little bit more challenging. Uh, but it was a pretty easy swap at this stage of the build. But anyway, so that's it. So I, I get the frame all uh, put back together. And uh, now I'm back to being as good as new. And then I can focus on continuing with my build, which includes getting the wiring done. Oh, and the other cool thing is I never used all the hardware that came with the new frame. So I've got some spare screws uh, now. So that's kind of handy. All right, so... Wiring is a very personal thing, so I'm not going to do a step-by-step -step on wiring. I'm just going to show you how I ended up doing mine. It was through a lot of trial and error. Um, I did put a uh, wire loom over the motor wires. Um, I've heard from people, actually one person in particular, who uh, had his wires get chafed because of vibration. So uh, I wanted to make sure I did that. I have my receiver mounted below. It's an X6R. And I'm using S-Bus to get to the GT 5.2. And then I'm using these paddle antennas, one in the front on the horizontal plane and then one here on the vertical plane. And uh, I think those are going to work out nice. You can see how I have all the wiring sort of tucked away inside the frame, uh, being careful to make sure that everything is tidy and will stay out of the way of the main gear. This is my uh, telemetry sensor for battery voltage. And basically, I have it plugged into a extension for the balance port on the battery. You can see here, uh, once I plug in the battery, those wires tuck nicely down uh, underneath the ESC, which is mounted on that little plate down there. And as I mentioned before, I can plug in the balance plug for the battery. And then that will allow me to get battery telemetry sent to my receiver, but I also have this handy display on the side of the helicopter. Shows overall voltage for the pack as well as individual cell voltage. And uh, that's going through the S port up into the receiver. And uh, you can see how I have the wiring uh, zip tied around. Uh, and also any place that the wires cross carbon fiber, um, I have them in some shrink tubing or some other protective uh, covering. Uh, and of course the goal is obviously to make sure everything stays out of the way and uh, you know is also tidy. So I did go ahead and figure out my motor direction. So just to give you a quick primer, if you're new to this, the rotor head is going to rotate clockwise as seen from the top, which means your motor is going to need to rotate counterclockwise. It's going to go the opposite direction. So if it's not spinning in the right direction when you give it throttle, you just need to reverse any two of the ESC wires. Just pick any two, it doesn't really matter, and swap them, and then that'll switch directions for the motor. And then you should be good to go. All right, the last thing I'll show you real quick is a question I get a lot about, can the battery be removed and inserted with the canopy on, which is one of the selling points of this particular style of helicopter. And uh, as you can see here, I'll demonstrate. Uh, I have two straps holding the battery on, and I'm just gonna slip these out real quick and then I'll show you that uh, the battery can be easily removed and also reinserted. It does take a little bit of practice. It's a tight fit um, and if you've seen my mod on the battery tray you know that I don't have a lot of clearance there to slip a battery in and out. Um, so uh, you know getting the wires out of the way is, is kind of critical. Uh, but once you uh, get it out 
uh, you know, it slips in and out fairly easily. And then you can push it forward. And then because there's a hole in the front of the canopy, you can also index it. You see here, I only have Velcro on the back half of the battery. That allows me to slide it forward uh, on the battery tray and then, you know, push down and fasten the Velcro on the back side. And then, of course, using the straps to hold it to the battery tray. I found if I had Velcro across the entire battery, it didn't slide, uh, which made it very difficult to get in and out. Here's another look from the side just so you can kind of see how things are going. There really is a lot of room in there uh, to make this happen. So uh, very convenient. And I did find now that all the electronics are installed that the heli does balance best with the battery as far forward on the battery tray as I can get it. But anyway, uh, that's it. Um, thanks for watching. If you like this, give me a thumbs up. As always, comments and feedback are welcome. You can uh, keep up with me on Google+, Facebook, or Twitter. Hit me up on my website, everythingcpo.com, which has a little bit of everything that I'm working on, including all of these videos and other articles and things that I post from time to time. And also, don't forget to subscribe uh, to my YouTube channel and uh, keep up with me in the future. So thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.